and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Dwayne Butcher with Lean Frontiers, calling in from Indianapolis, Indiana, and I'll serve as your host today. You can also see Bo Keat on the uh, screen, and I'll introduce him shortly. Today's webinar is part of the Engine Energize Your Journey webinar series that we're doing with the Association for Manufacturing Excellence. Uh, the series will highlight several of the presenters that you'll meet at the annual AME conference in Toronto, Canada, October 26th through the 30th. So stay tuned at the end of this webinar because I'll be sharing a special discount code that will provide $500 off the standard registration fee. So let's turn our attention to our presentation today. Uh, today's session is being recorded. So look for an email uh, within an hour or so after the presentation ends with a link to the recording. You'll find it at the bottom of the email. Please do share this with others in your organization. Also, due to the short nature of our presentation today, uh, we will not be fielding questions. However, our presenter will share his email address and I'm sure would be happy to receive direct messages if you have questions. So let me introduce our presenter, Bo Keat. Bo is president of the Keat Group, where he teaches, coaches, and facilitates process improvements and the alignment of leadership to support those very improvements. He's also author of two Shingo Prize winning publications, The Complete Lean Enterprise and Perfecting Patient Journeys. So for now, Bo, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you. Great. Uh, thanks, Wayne. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, thanks, Dwayne. And good afternoon, everyone. Um, I have two purposes over the next 25 minutes or so. The first is actually to give you a little bit of value that might be helpful. And I think this topic is incredibly timely right now. Uh, so I want to give you some value that you can walk away with. And I also want to entice you to attend my workshop at uh, the AME uh, conference in October. On Monday night, it's a dinner uh, conference. It's a dinner workshop and presentation. So, in order to start to entice you, I gave you a provocative title: "Can I Coach You Out of Lean Coaching and Other Treacherous Thoughts?" Because there are dozens of people out there who would see this title and suggest it was at a minimum scandalous. So, if we think about the commandments of lean. One of the commandments is thou shalt coach. Fine. Well, way back a long time ago, someone else was putting the commandments together and they had a little asterisk. They said, well, maybe not all the time. Maybe it's not absolute. Maybe killing is okay with annoying neighbors. So using that as a preface, maybe it's okay to challenge the commandments we now have in the lean doctrine. So I, I wanna take you through a little bit of it because I think it's critically important to think about what you do with your time, your time. So we have new thoughts on operational excellence. We have spent decades focusing on the work closest to the external customer. We still hear about that. If you're on LinkedIn and see everyone posting stuff, it's all about frontline workers. When are we gonna get off the fact that it's not just about frontline workers? We also have the other 40% of the workforce that's not frontline. How do we address that? And no one seems to really take up that, uh, that baton very quickly. We have had a newer focus on the behaviors inside an organization that make a difference. So uh, maybe 10 or 12 years ago, People started talking about behaviors. The Shingo model kind of condensed all those into a really cool model that we can use, but now we're worried about behaviors and that's a good thing. But we continue to have dilemmas on the gaps leaders face in the work you choose to do, the actual physical work you choose to do towards transformative change. So what we're looking at now right now, today, is a very different world of work for you than in January or February. The pandemic has changed your work. And whatever you used to do 
if you try to do it now, is difficult or different or both. So I think this is a great opportunity to challenge the work you do. So let's try PDCA. When we did our work, when we added work, some really cool lean work for managers and leaders, whatever you choose to call it. Some people call it leadership standard work. I'd rather not use that term. I don't think it's an appropriate or accurate term. That's another discussion. But whatever you did, you did some planning for this new work as lean leaders. And then you did some doing that was very methodical and deliberate. Let's try this, let's do it. Lots of people forgot to check. Is it doing the work, is it making the difference that you intended to have? Part of that is you weren't really sure what you wanted. You may not have even been sure what problem this new work was even supposed to solve and how to measure it. But push that aside for now. Just say, oops, you know what? We didn't check it. Maybe today is the time to check it because it's really different and or really difficult. And maybe we can adjust so we can kind of erase those oops at the bottom of the slide. So this is a very broad topic. I just, I just like to use a couple of minutes to tease out some thinking, excuse me, and some paradigm shifting that might be considered or that you might, might want to consider. Coaching and Gemba walks. First of all, coaching. I can't see you, but if I could, I'd ask for a show of hands. How many have this card on your lanyard? If you do, that's a good thing. But if you're still reaching up when you approach teams and referring to it quickly and going like this and going through the questions, I'm betting if you've done it for more than a week, the teams already know the questions. They're the same questions. And I'm also betting if you've been doing it more than a few months, that the teams are already using these same questions in your absence to coach each other. They get it. They know these are good questions. So they're already practicing this. You may not need to be around for that. So I have an example. This example comes from a time before Toyota Kata was published and was one of my clients in food processing. And they had some issues and they wanted to really figure out how do we get plant managers and the management within plants to coach better. So uh, we spent a couple of days talking them through coaching, teaching coaching, and then we gave them an assignment and left. And the assignment was to try something, to put a plan together and try it. That's P and D out of PDCA. So they paired up. That was part of our plan. Please pair up because when you pair up, you can watch each other coach their people. So they watched each other. At the end, they gave each other feedback. Hey, I saw you ask this kind of question. What were you intending to get out of that question? Or, wow, remember when so-and-so said such and such, you responded like this. What was your thinking behind that? Is that what you really wanted to do? So they would use that, uh, have a little pair huddle, and they would get feedback and make an adjustment on the spot saying, okay, next time I coach, I'm gonna make these adjustments. And they go out and do it. So when I came back two weeks later, they already had prepared a report out to me that detailed each of two iterative cycles, PDCA cycles, of what they were doing, what they learned, how they adjusted. And my role that they wanted me to do, I didn't have this role up front, their role was, here's where we are, what do you think, what do you think we should be doing? And my response was, you're doing fine, I'll be back in two weeks. So I came back in two weeks and once again, they were improving. So I made one more checkup and then I left the client. They got it. So if they got it, maybe the people you are coaching get it. And maybe you could kind of relieve that and spend 
you either change your coaching or use some of that coaching time to do something else because it's already been ingrained quite well in your organization. So that's about coaching. Second one is gimbal walks. I love gimbal walks. It is so cool, especially at this point in my life, to walk through uh, manufacturing plants, see how they're making widgets, and remember how they used to make them when I first got involved 30 years ago. This is really cool to see the differences. But I've been with people who want to use this occasion to stop, look at a problem, walk over to the problem, bring people around the problem, solve the problem, and then coach them. That is disrespectful. Is disrespectful because the person who should be helping them solve the problem and coach them is the person they report to, not the boss, boss, boss. If you want to be respectful, the people you need to help problem solve and help coach is one level down from you. So if you're the plant manager, you don't get near the floor in terms of coaching and problem solving. You cut the, you're basically cutting the legs off the ship supervisors who were supposed to be improving their capabilities of coaching and problem solving with their team. And you subvert all their information, all their stuff. All their work you're subverting because you're leaping down when you shouldn't be. So keep the gimbal walks. Do not do problem solving or coaching. Now, this is all, these are just two examples. And you could say, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. I get that. But they're just examples to put on the table to say, we're really trying to assess right now how much time you're spending on activities that simply don't need it. And this is the perfect time to do the assessment because I'm betting you're either consciously or unconsciously making some decisions right now during this pandemic about what not to do. So it's time to assess formally what you used to be doing in January or February and then challenge that to see if you can free up some of your own time. I'm betting you have a lot on your plate. Let's see if we can take some of that off. So your baseline of real work. This is homework. Uh, in the workshop in October, this will be live work, but we only have 30 minutes. So this is homework. What do you really do? I don't care about what your job description says. I don't care what your title is. What do you actually do? What do you do? How long does it take? How often do you do it? And with whom? And I know if you sit back and say, but I do a thousand things. I get it. Everyone does a thousand things. But let's just go for the 80-20 rule. I'll take the 80%. 80% of your work, what do you do? I'm going to help you out. I'm going to give you a little piece of ment a, a, a mental nudge. Here's you in the middle. You do work with and for your boss. You do work with and for your peers. You do work with and for subordinates, and you do work with and for customers. They could be external or internal. That's what you do. And here's a template you can use as part of your homework. Here's you in the middle again. Fill out the quadrants. What exactly do you do in this 80% of your time, and how often? Fill that in. Be thoughtful. You are able to reflect now about what used to happen in February, take that shot and take some time. And I'm betting that once you write that down, you will come to re the realization that you've already kind of figured out what's most valuable in your work. And some of that uh, uh, on your sheet from the last slide may have already slipped off the page because we're starting to learn what's most valuable to sustain or grow our own business. And at the same time, we've learned what may not be as valuable. So there is a gap. What a great place to be in continuous improvement. We have a gap. So 
What's not critical that we continue to do? I'm, I'm betting you already know some of the stuff because you stopped doing it. But let's be formal about it. So write down on the worksheet. You just made out this little worksheet with these quadrants. Highlight the ones that aren't that critical anymore in a pandemic. And ask yourself, what has been well intention of all this work that I do, but no longer necessary? Or what eats up our time that doesn't help us move forward, especially now? So there's some examples. You could have unprof unprofitable products and services. You know what? It must be very painful for you right now to support those products and services when they don't even make money to begin with and you're struggling to figure out how do we get ourselves, how do we build back to our new reality. We also have meetings that aren't focused on our strategic needs like building back to our new reality. And once we get there, doing what we need to do to be competitive 18 to 24 months out. Or there could be program, programs of the month that never die. I'm betting they've been put on pause. I'm, I just have this feeling that the crisis we're in now, they're kind of going by the wayside. So why not just take them off the board altogether? And if you do that, the big question is, how much capacity can you free up? It's all about capacity. I'm giving you the opportunity to rationalize your work the same way we gave the frontline workers an opportunity to rationalize their work when we changed it. I'd like you to change your work. And to do that, I need to be as respectful as we were to the front line. And it's respectful to say, the things maybe you shouldn't do anymore, what is that? Because you should be doing different things and more of it. So going back to the template, here we are. I've just used the purple to say, that's my highlight. I cross those things off. It's not worth doing this anymore. And I've added how much time is involved there. So in this example, uh, I've actually taken 11 hours out of my week. Now, as funky as this is, I have an example, that a, a real live example I'm gonna use in Toronto that's uh, an executive VP of a very well-known company. Went through this and he saved 30% of his time, three zero, 30% of his time an executive VP by challenging the paradigms and saying, I don't need to do that. But as you say that, you can't just pull the plug. You actually have to say, I better get to those people whose work I'm going to be pulling back from or eliminate the, the tasks or eliminating those tasks and make sure it's okay. So now it's about socialization. And socialization is a cycle of communication, modification, and consensus building. So in this, you have to actually reach out to those people. If you're taking work away that you do, used to do with or for a customer, go to the customer. Talk about why you don't think it's important anymore and get some feedback, get their reality to say yes or no, or well, you got most of it, but this other thing over here, I really need because. So you, you get a back and forth and you can solidify a good list of what to take away. And at that point, you're getting your work right. You've been, been methodical and deliberate. Let's see if I get this right. You've been methodical and deliberate on planning. You've been methodical and deliberate on doing. Now you're checking. You're checking through the socialization. Methodical, deliberate. Now you're acting. I'm going to try something different. Hold on to your seat. So the way to get there is to iterate your way to better work. Remember those plant managers who went through two iterative cycles on figuring how to coach better? You should be doing the same to iterate on how to work better as you remove this stuff, because it's just on paper. And paper is not the same as reality. So as you implement this stuff, pilot it, run formal experiments, and find out, is this working or not? and why, and then try something else until you get to the point where you can successfully remove work from what you're doing. 
Maybe some of it's lean coaching, maybe it's not. So that's, that's basically my main message, my little nudge here today. I'm very hopeful that you can use this pandemic and the crisis and the mess and the chaos it creates for you to see this as an opportunity to rationalize and analyze the work that you actually have to do and create a better way and better work for you to do both as you get out of the pandemic and move forward to what you once had as strategic goals in January and February. So my October wor workshop will be will contain this exercise in addition to others. We'll be able to define different types of gaps in your current work and what I call great leader work and then challenge you on site through the same method as I just did. And we'll also add in some uh, we'll also add in, in some behaviors, the ones that are necessary to get the results you seek. And then I'll be throwing in some thoughts and some exercises around the shingle model. So that's it for now. I encourage you to reach out to me. There are three ways to do it right there. And I'm more than willing to look at your homework. I'm more than willing to spend time with you on the phone. I'm more than willing to share other thoughts. If you just give me a call or link up with me or email me, I'd be more than happy to do so. So that's it for now. Great. Bo, oh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Not, not only for sharing with us uh, here today, but thanks for your contributions to the improvement community over the years. Really appreciate that. Looking forward to actually meeting you in person uh, in <laughs> Toronto. Although, how many people have you met in the last few weeks through Zoom and so forth? I've I've met a number of people this, yeah. this virtual virtual way. So yeah, quite a few. Great. Yeah, greatly looking forward to uh, uh, meeting everybody up in Toronto and uh, gathering friends and colleagues once again. So the a uh, AME conference is. And Bo, I'm sure this is true for you too, has always been one of the highlights of my year each year. And that's that's coming from a guy who actually runs conferences for a living uh, that I look to the AME conferences uh, as a bright spot on my my calendar each year. So yeah, uh, if, it, it's yeah, a good, go actually, I, I really like this. I, I didn't go for a few years and I went back and I realized how many people I missed. I, I oh, literally yeah. missed them. Like, oh my God, I haven't seen you for a long time. It's so good to see you again. I, wow. It's like I reconnect with everybody I ever knew. So it's, it's an amazing opportunity. It's very much a family reunion. And if you don't have a big family in the lean community, <laughs> you'll, you'll get it there. That's for sure. Yes. yes. Um, we're, uh, Bo, if you wouldn't mind, could you go to the next slide? Uh, I don't know if you still have that by any chance. Oh, I do. I'm sorry. I was, forgot. That, that, that's fine. Um, it just mentions the uh, discount code on here. If you're interested, uh, by registering using AME Lean, all one word, uh, you'll get a $500 discount uh, when you register. So please do that. Go to ame.org and learn more about the event and uh, meet both Bo and I up in Toronto. So Bo, thanks again. Thanks to all of you who participated in today's webinar. There is light at the end of this tunnel that we're all in. Uh, but one thing I know is that it's our community, this improvement community, that's as well suited as anybody to come out better on the other side of this. So thanks so much for everyone participating and go do good things. Good luck. Bye. Be safe. <laughs>